little roundup of the West Ham news today. A load of little stories here and there, injury news, a uh, little bit of transfer stuff. Uh, I should probably point out Zippy is wearing uh, the colours today. That's a thank you to Susan. I did spot your comment uh, when you wrote on one of the videos over the last couple of days. Uh, Susan asked, can Zippy have a West Ham scarf on? So there he is. He loves it as well. Thank you very much, Susan. OK, let's, let's run with the stories. I did want to discuss the uh, Manchester City stuff. Let's, let's put it that way. Um, but I need to get my teeth into it a little bit more. I've got something going on with the football regulator, which is of massive interest to me as well. So I'll probably do that all in one go. Today's not the day to be discussing Manchester City and its ramifications on the league. And, and I guess... In turn, uh, any impact it might have on West Ham United. What we do know today is that Tilo Kera is out for three weeks-ish. Now, I thought he was substituted <laughs> for being crap. Uh, but no, it seems uh, that actually he was substituted uh, because of an injury, which is why against Newcastle, Ben Johnson came on at half-time. I think Ben Johnson did OK. Now, here's the interesting thing. Is David Moyes going to switch from this formation that has sort of served him quite well in the last couple of games, hasn't it? So, I, I, I hope he still perseveres with it. I mean, Ben Johnson is absolutely fine in that position. In fact, I prefer him there to Tilo Kera at the moment. I've not written Kera off. I really haven't. In fact, I don't think it was a horrendous performance against Newcastle. I thought we got better as the game went on. It, it's, the, it's the one mistake per game, which possibly and often does lead to a goal. I know it wasn't just him. You could you could chart that goal back that Callum Wilson scored. Back to Fabianski hoofing it. You could um you could criticize uh, Mikel Antonio if you wanted to for getting out wrestled. Lucas Paqueta for dwelling on it. And you could also criticize Ogbonna as well. You know, I understand that. And if it was just one isolated incident, I probably wouldn't be looking just at Tilo Kera on this, but there does appear to be a mistake in, in almost every single game. So that doesn't concern me that Johnson can go in there I do worry that David Moyes might think, well, hold on a second, this is, this is going to... The risk of not having an additional defender might well impact him and he might not play that system. I hope he does persevere with it. Uh, but anyway, so Kara out for, for three weeks. No news on Kurt Zuma as yet. Uh, that being said, there was a little bit of training footage. Uh, did you see it with the, the club release? I quite like I quite enjoy watching it, actually. Skamaka was in the training footage. I didn't and I didn't see Zuma in it. If you did, uh, great, let me know. But I didn't see Zuma in it, so I, I would probably conclude that he won't be available for the Chelsea game. Don't know. Just That is just me guessing. But by the same rationale, I would conclude that Skamaka is, which makes things really interesting, doesn't it? What's David Moyes going to do? Is he... I was gonna, I was gonna say, has he ever had three strikers at, at the club? He probably has, but three strikers he would want to use: Mikel Antonio, Annie Dings, and Skamaka. I gotta say, uh, the Annie Dings and Skamaka partnership is one that interests me. Not that Antonio has been playing well; he has. I've been quite pleased with what I've seen. But obviously, Skamaka played alongside Raspadori, um, and uh, both a national team and at club level, obviously. I'm not suggesting Danny Ings is, is like Raspadori, but there's there's enough difference between them that they could their styles can complement one another. That'd be interesting. Is David Moyes brave enough to do that? That that really is. Don't think Skamaka will go into the team. Look, we'll discuss all this in the preview. Myself and G will be doing a preview ahead of that Chelsea game. Uh, it'd be interesting. Really, really interesting to see. But it looks as if Skamaka returns. Obviously, Ings he had the knock against Everton. Obviously, came came off the bench didn't he, against Newcastle, and Antonio looks fit. What what's he gonna do? This is this is really really interesting. So so that that's quite nice. Um, a little bit more. Yesterday we did the Declan Rice video just to add a little bit more to that. Mark Noble, very interesting interview from Mark Noble actually. Uh, Mark Noble uh, was speaking with the Evening Standard. He was talking about his sporting director role. Seemed very enthused by it. Seemed very um, very up for it which obviously is in stark contrast to the rumours that we heard last week, which was, or was it the week before, whatever, uh, that there'd been a falling out, that, that he was close to quitting his job, he'd walked out and then he'd come back. We don't know. Now, the club came out and said these rumours are absolute rubbish, which I would expect them to do that. That's, that's just part of the course. That's just, um, uh, you know, crisis management and I was going to say good PR, average PR, let's put it that way. Uh, but, but Mark Noble, as I say, he seemed, seemed vibrant. Some would say effervescent about it and uh, he was talking about how he's learning uh, the ropes he's been he's spoken to uh, people on um, I think the, the Monaco sporting director 
Uh, there was another one as well. You know, he's gone overseas and spoken to people. They've invited him over there to see how it's done so we can learn the role. I think this is important. I really do uh, because, well, he's got no experience in it at all. Uh, he was at the um, under-18s game in Stoke, uh, which Gio attended. Gio was, has uploaded a video of the under-18. Basically, Gio went to the under-18s and he's uploaded a report on that uh, up on our, on our Patreon page, our Patreon, our Patreon channel. If you want to know how to get involved in that, the link is in the description below to join up with Hammers Chat Patreon. Um, so Mark Noble was there. Gio saw Mark Noble um, there. And, uh, and he's also been involved, been meeting agents, talking with agents. That was quite interesting in the interview as well. And he says he has a day. A day. He reports, this is the interesting one, Mark Noble reports, day, he speaks to David Moyes daily. I'm just trying to make sure I've got the quote right. Speaks to David Moyes daily and he reports back to David Sullivan every day uh, via a Zoom call or something like that. I might have that slightly wrong, but I haven't got it a lot wrong. All right. It's, it's more or less there. Um, that's interesting, isn't it? So, you know, meeting with agents, that suggests he's getting involved in in transfers and stuff like that. Why would he not get involved in agents? And it's really interesting to hear how he was speaking about saving the club money uh, by, um, by the, the academy doing well. Uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's that. Oh, something I've got to say before I forget, before I just talk about the last bit, because there's another club interested in Declan Rice. Um, I want to say hello to Leandros from Nicosia, who was in Vienna. And I'll tell you what, it never surprises me our, our West Ham fans pop up in, in every corner of the world. You, you can't go in. I wasn't in Nicosia or Vienna. Me mum was, basically. She bumped into this chap. Um, they got chatting. And, uh, and basically, it, it turns out he was a West Ham fan. Um, lovely, lovely guy. So, yeah, I want to say uh, hello to him as well. I've got a story. I'll tell you a story another time. The most, the most obscure place I ever bumped into a West Ham fan. Uh, where you just wouldn't think it. We'll do that another time. I won't do it on this. Don't, please don't put your comments about here. That's actually a separate video. I'd be very, very interested to know. We'll do that as a video, actually. The time you bumped into another West Ham fan in the, in the far-flung corners of the earth when you least expected it. Uh, just finally, I said I was going to talk about Declan Rice. Newcastle, uh, not Newcastle. Uh, well, Newcastle probably would be interested. We, we spoke about that yesterday, though. Liverpool. Now, Liverpool are interested. This is a funny one. Liverpool are, well, Liverpool, in, in Liverpool's terms, they're in crisis. Look, I'd love to be in the sort of crisis that Liverpool are in as a West Ham fan. But comparatively, recent Champions League winners, recent league winners, they're in a bit of crisis, aren't they? And, and, and Klopp does not look happy. I don't want to say, I've got to be honest with you, I don't want to say too much about it, because actually I don't think he looks well. So I just, we'll, 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 leave, it, we'll leave it there, OK? But it is, things are not great. At Liverpool at the moment, that's for sure. So that it was due; they were due to be signing um, Jude Bellingham at the end of the season. Now, I think Jude Bellingham, for all the talk about Declan Rice, and I, and I love Declan Rice. I think Declan Rice is outstanding. I think he is one of the best defensive midfielders in the world. I, I really, really do. Um, but I would counter that by saying I think Jude Bellingham is one of the best midfielders in the world. He's pro, you know, I mean, there's he's in the top five of any midfielder that any club would cover and would be going for. The, the suspicion has been all along that Liverpool were going to buy him at the end of this season. But I've got to say, Bellingham is that good. If Liverpool are not in European football, would Bellingham go? I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure about this. I, I, I think if I were him, I'd be looking at other options. I, I really good, really would. Um, don't forget, Bellingham's agent is his dad. He's going to look after him. They're going to do what's right. For the lad, I really like I really like that dynamic. It's actually same for um, for Declan, uh, but I think Declan did have a different agent, but now it is his dad. Um, I think Jude Bellingham's agent has always been his dad, so you know that he that was a it was a shrewd move to go from Birmingham to go overseas. I thought that was really really smart of him. Anyway, so the suspicion is anyway. So sorry, the story is now that Liverpool might be turning their attentions to Declan Rice. Uh, there's also the, the story is that maybe, just maybe, I don't know why this figure came up, 104 million, weird one, isn't it? Um, but maybe, just maybe, Arsenal might be prepared to pay 104 million for Declan Rice. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Look, I, hey, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just telling you the stories that are doing the rounds at the moment in the, in the West Ham world. There's not an awful lot of them. I, I do feel it's the calm before the storm. We have, we've had all this 
met loads of West Ham news. We had transfer window. We had, um, you know, lots of stuff about the uncertainty with David Moyes' job. Obviously, the window's closed. I think we, we would all concede that David Moyes, uh, you know, whether you want him there or whether you don't, is in the position for the time being now. So that speculation stopped. So we're not talking about new managers coming in and, and that sort of thing. Um, and I also think, you know, a lot of the other news has sort of died down as well. But I do think it's about to kick off as well. I don't mean kick off, but the news uh, is about to get busy again in West Ham terms because we're about to play Chelsea. We're about to play Tottenham. There are players coming back from injury. I just think there's all sorts happening. So, yeah, a bit, a bit of the calm before the storm. Uh, anyway, as of today, those are the stories. Um, you know, mostly Tilo Kera. It's Gamaka coming back. We don't really know uh, too much about Kurt Zuma. Um I, I, do, you, do you know what it feels like with Declan Rice? It feels like, like you know, like the start of a Formula One race where we all get ready on the grid. They do the formation lap and they all sort of start lining up on the grid and they all start taking their places. The, the Declan Rice uh, transfer saga, let's call it that, has that feel about it. I feel that all the clubs, Arsenal, Newcastle, Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea, they're all, they're all taking their... They're all taking their place uh, on the starting grid. It's going to be. I was. I was. I was trying to find think of something sort of pithy uh, to say and try and segue into Formula One and Declan Rice. Um, I can't. I'm sure you'll think of it and you'll because you're a clever bunch, really, aren't you? And you'll post it below in the comments. I'll catch up with you tomorrow.